I was listening to uh, a clip of a debate that James White had with George Bryson on the Bible Answer Man, which was recorded about three to four years ago. And uh, I hadn't heard this clip before, and I heard it this morning. And uh, Bryson was asking James White if God uh, ordained the rape of a child. And uh, White went round the houses until Hank Hanegraaff tied him down. And uh, he had to admit that God ordains everything in the universe, good and evil. Uh, I find that sort of thinking quite repulsive. And uh, we need to be careful, very careful, when we try to understand the sovereignty of the Lord and man's free will. Man does have a free will. And God is sovereign they are both irreconcilable and uh, we shouldn't throw out one to allow the other to stand I'll come back to these two individuals on the Bible answer man in a moment but I want to put a few verses and uh, give you some more thoughts of what I discovered on this whole area the Bible tells us to love our enemies and pray for our neighbors Okay, so we're to pray for our neighbours and love our enemies. We are to do good to all men. Yet Calvinism says that God hates such people and only loves the elect. So how are we supposed to be ambassadors for Christ? How are we supposed to live righteously? How are we to do what we do knowing that the Lord doesn't uh, share our desires our views psalm 5 5 quote the foolish shall not stand in thy sight thou hatest all workers of iniquity close quote god hates all workers of iniquity okay john three sixteen. for god so loved the world past tense that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life first of all every major bible bar a few have the word whosoever or whoever so when people say that the word whoever or whosoever is not in the original greek which nobody has and nobody has ever seen then you have to think why are these people putting up such cases why are they restricting the atonement and if that word isn't in the original Greek which nobody has and nobody has seen why does every Bible translation translate it whosoever or whoever also bear this in mind who benefits from restricting the atonement to just a few I think it's the devil He's the only person who can benefit from teaching a restricted atonement. Okay. Uh, Romans 11.21 Quote, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Close quote. What happened to irresistible grace? Israel is God's chosen and elect nation. Yet this verse makes it clear that the Lord is pleading with these people to come to him, and they won't. So man does have a free will, and yet God is sovereign, irreconcilable. God is not the author of sin. Back to James White and George Bryson. If God is, uh, hypothetically, if God is the author of sin, and if everything happens in the universe due to an eternal decree, should we then try to stop abortions taking place? Should we send aid to third world countries? Should we stop child abuse taking place? Should we fight wars? Should we have police officers trying to restrict evil? Or should we just sit back 
and allow evil to spread because nobody can stop it. Why? Because it's God's preordained eternal will. Psalm 5 4 quote, For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. Jeremiah 7.31, quote, And they have built the high places of Tophet, they built it, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, now watch it, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. Isaiah 45.7, quote, I form the light, and create darkness, I make peace, and create evil, I the Lord do all these things. John MacArthur's study Bible, uh, I'm going to show it to you quickly here, I'm not sure if you can see that, uh, it's not very easy, <laughs> uh, well you'll have to trust me, I can't get it near enough to the camera, he has no reference he has no footnote to Isaiah 45. In fact, a lot of the Old Testament in MacArthur's reference Bible has few notes. This reference, this scripture, is cited by Calvinists to affirm they believe that God ordains evil. God does allow evil to exist and makes it possible for those that hate him and are estranged from him to do what they wish to do, but he is not responsible for man's actions. Romans 1.18-32 to makes it crystal clear and unequivocal to anybody who cares to look what happens when the Lord gives people over to their vile affections. But you better take a look at Ephesians 4.19 to get the order right. Quote, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Close quote. When man gives himself up, the Lord concurs, and then there is no going back for man. Most people die as they lived. It's true he hardened Pharaoh's heart, but Pharaoh's heart was already hardened. Calvinists say that uh, God raised him up to destroy him. Again, again, it is true that he was raised up to fall. However, so was Nebuchadnezzar, and the latter repented, whereas the former did not. Did God want Pharaoh saved? Yes, he did. But he won't force his irresistible grace on anybody. I do believe, however, that God raised up Hitler, for example, to punish sinful Europe. Then the Allies were raised up to punish sinful Germany. I do believe that. I think history affirms this time and time again. God does use saved and unsaved people to bring his plan into being. However, the evil and wickedness that were evident in the Holocaust was man's doing not God's. Also we find vivid accounts in the Old Testament about what would happen to the Jews who went off into Babylon. But foreknowledge is not the same as preordination. It's not the same as issuing an eternal decree. Okay. Only in Revelation 18.17 do we have uh, a part of scripture where it says the Lord put it into man's hearts to fulfill his will. But uh, that has already uh, been covered in a previous video and I'll just say quickly that uh, that has reference to unsaved people. Again, dealing with unsaved people. Uh, in Luke 23, Jesus is hanging naked on a cross for six hours and he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Why would Jesus Christ ask the Father to forgive unelected, non atoned for pagans? James White was wrong. God 
is not the author of sin. He has no pleasure in wickedness. He mourns for sinful man, but he won't force man to come to the cross. It has been said that the atonement is sufficient for everybody, without exception. But it is only efficient for those who claim it. Scripture says he died for his sheep. Yes, you have to be saved to become a sheep. Then you are saved. That is, again, those who claim the atonement. We've already shown you uh, from the scripts that uh, he died for the sins of the whole world. And it is up to you to appropriate that yourself. God won't save you, you have to save yourself. And I will close for now, thank you.